Hi and welcome to the medicine theme. This video is on COPD. So as an introduction, we're going to start with a couple questions about COPD. The first one, which two of the following conditions typically characterize the pathophysiology that underpins COPD? One, bronchiectasis, interstitial lung disease, emphysema, or chronic bronchitis. It may help to consider what COPD, the acronym, stands for in order to consider which of the conditions is most appropriate. And the answer is emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Question two. Which of the following are characteristic of chronic bronchitis? Scarring of the lung, hypertrophy of mucous glands, dilation of the alveoli following septal wall destruction, or permanent dilatation of the bronchi? The answer is B, hypertrophy of the mucous gland. And the third and final introduction question, which of the following symptoms or signs would be atypical of a patient with COPD? Shortness of breath, a dry cough, a hyperinflated chest, or fatigue? And the answer is B, because as is the definition of chronic bronchitis, you'd expect a productive cough. So COPD, in this presentation, we're going to consider what it is, the symptoms and history, the epidemiology, investigations and differentials, what you might expect for on clinical, clinical examination, and the management of COPD. We're then going to summarise with a case and some short questions. So what is COPD? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD for short, is an umbrella term that refers to the obstructive airways diseases of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Chronic bronchitis is defined as a daily productive cough for three months of the year over two consecutive years. It's characterized by hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the mucous glands and also bronchial wall inflammation with mucosal edema. Emphysema is a disease of the terminal airways characterized by destruction of the alveolar septal walls leading to dilation of the alveoli themselves. There's a net result of air trapping. It should be noted that COPD is a progressive condition of the airways. However, you can also experience exacerbations of this condition whereby an, ex an external stimulus such as an infection will worsen the patient's condition. Symptoms. So typical symptoms of COPD include a daily productive cough, persistent and progressive breathlessness, which may be worse on exertion, chest tightness and also fatigue. Signs that you may see include cyanosis and expiratory wheeze, frequent respiratory tract infections, purse lip breathing, accessory muscle use or ankle swelling. The history of a patient with COPD. So when taking a history, it's really important to screen the patient for any risk factors. Examples include an extensive history of cigarette smoking, as it's very, very common that a patient with COPD was a previous or is still currently smoking. You also want to check for any exposure to pollutants at work, typically over long periods of time, and also an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The classic presentation of a patient with COPD would, that, would be that of a smoker, presenting with progressive respiratory symptoms such as breathlessness and a productive cough. The symptoms may be worse on exertion and they may also report having frequent infections. So who is affected by COPD? Typically, COPD affects middle-aged adults and above. You typically see a significant smoking history in those with COPD and you also may see those who who have or have a family history of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Investigations. Spirometry is really important. So spirometry assesses the FEV1 and FEC ratio of a patient. In the case of COPD you would expect an obstructive pattern so a ratio of less than 0.7. The two main obstructive airways diseases are COPD and asthma. And so to differentiate between them, you 
need to test for reversibility where the patient is given a salbutamol inhaler and their spirometry is repeated. In COPD, no significant change is observed. However, in asthma, you will see reversal of the condition. You can also look at the patient's lung function test. So you would typically expect airflow limitation increasing as the patient's disease deteriorates. The severity of a patient's COPD is assessed using the FEV1 value. And finally, a chest x-ray. There are various signs that you may see in a patient with COPD. The most prominent on x-ray um, is considered to be hyperinflation of the lungs. You can also check the patient's alpha-1 antitrypsin levels. If they're low, it may explain the cause of the patient's COPD. So this table here demonstrates the severity scoring of COPD mentioned within the lung function tests. Stage 1 is described as being mild and it's classified as an FEV1 of greater than 80% predicted. Stage 2 is moderate with an FEV1 of 50 to 80% predicted. Stage 3 is severe, FEV1 of 30 to 50% predicted. And stage 4 is very severe with an FEV1 of less than 30%. In terms of differentials, the main one is asthma, just because they're both obstructive diseases affecting the airways. In a moment, we'll have a little look at a table that will appear on the right-hand side of the slide to demonstrate how you can differentiate between asthma and COPD clinically. Another differential to consider is heart failure. So heart failure is also a chronic condition that you may expect shortness of breath and ankle swelling. You're, the patient's also likely to report orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and you may also hear crackles on auscultation. These last three features are atypical of a patient with COPD. Bronchiectasis is another differential. You would expect chronic production of sputum, although on very large quantities. Uh, on examination, however, the patient may have caused crackles and digital clubbing, which would not be consistent with a patient with COPD. This table presents the differences between COPD and asthma. It's quite a useful tool in order to differentiate between the two, especially clinically. A lot of the information is quite generalised and it may not always be the case 100% of the time. However, it's a great illustration of the general rules. So in COPD, it's very common that the patient is smoking or was a smoker. Whereas in asthma, it's possible, but it's not really that influential. The age of onset is typically older of, in the case of COPD, so over the age of 35. Asthma tends to affect the younger population. COPD does not show any atopic features, whereas asthma does, so signs of eczema or rhinitis. COPD, you'll often see cellular infiltration of macrophages, neutrophils and CD8, whereas generally speaking, an asthmatic response is very much dominated by eosinophils and CD4+. In COPD, you are likely to have a daily productive cough. In the case of asthma, if you do have a cough, it's usually dry. COPD presents with persistent and progressive breathlessness. Asthma is variable and often episodic. Nocturnal symptoms are uncommon in the case of COPD and common in asthma. And COPD is not easily reversible, whereas asthma is. So the management. Should be noted that this management section in this video will focus on the chronic management of COPD. There will be another video going up on the website which takes a look at managing an exacerbation of COPD. So in terms of chronic management, it typically depends on the severity of the patient's disease and symptoms. Fundamentally, the main things you want to think about are smoking cessation, patient education and also vaccination against pneumococcal and influenza. These are the building blocks of management of COPD and they're the first line things you want to be thinking about before offering any therapeutic interventions. After the above steps have been offered and the patient is still symptomatic, you then looked at nice guidance to introduce inhaled therapies. So this table demonstrates the nice guidance quite nicely. As you can see, the first step is to offer a PRN SABA inhaler, so a salbutamol. 
If the patient still has problems with their breathing, you then want to consider whether this could be asthma or not. If you're certain that it's not asthma, you can look to offer a LABA and a LAMA. If there is possibility that it's asthma, then there's a trial period that's introduced where you can introduce inhaled corticosteroid and the patient may respond to that. However, those with COPD do not respond to steroids. On examination, so generally the patient is usually older as we've established. They may be on oxygen therapy, they may have inhalers at the bedside, they may have a sputum pot. On inspection of the hands, you'd expect tar staining of the fingers. You could may see a flapping tremor uh, or a fine tremor, which would indicate CO2 retention and salbutamol use respectively. On palpation of the pulse, it's possible to feel pulsus paradoxus, which is where the wave volume decreases with inspiration. Inspection of the chest may observe barrel chesting due to hyperinflation, and auscultation of the chest may present with an expiratory wheeze. So to summarise this presentation, I've got a short case to go over with a couple of short questions to follow. 37-year-old Mrs Jones presents to her GP with shortness of breath and a productive cough. The symptoms have worsened over the last few months, initially present with exercise but now more frequent and at rest. Symptoms are no worse at night and on taking a history, the GP finds she has a 32-pack year smoking history and her family history of an alpha-1 and trypsin deficiency. Having considered possible differentials, the GP suspects a diagnosis of COPD. Which of the following points supports the GP's suspicion over that of asthma? Symptoms are no worse at night. The patient's aged 37. She's female, has a 32-pack year smoking history and a family history of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And the correct answers are A, B, D and E. So the same lady then undergoes spirometry testing with reversibility. She's found to have an FEV1 of 54%, an FVC of 84%, which gives an obstructive pattern of disease. No significant change was observed on testing reversibility. Which of the following classifications of this lady's COPD is correct? Stage 1, 2, 3 or 4. And the correct answer is stage 2. So this is because her FEV1 value is between 50 and 80%. Question 3. Mrs. Jones is given the appropriate advice regarding initial management of COPD. So this includes smoking cessation, education and vaccination. Given that Mrs. Jones's symptoms are still progressively getting worse, the GP suggests starting inhaled therapies. Which of the following options is the most suitable management plan on top of her current salbutamol PRN? A LABA, inhaled corticosteroid, theophylline, or a LABA and a LAMA. Thinking back to that flowchart shown on the previous slide, the correct answer is in fact D, a LABA and a LAMA. I hope this presentation was useful. Thank you very much for watching.